And then up here, the hobnail and endothelial cells. Now let's talk about hobnailing for just a second. What does it even mean? So in the old times, you know, there were like boots that had hobnails. I think they would use those on certain types of other leather products. They're nails that have kind of a bulging rounded um, head on the nail, not like the flat top nails that we have today. So when things had a hobnail in them, it would have this little bulging protuberance that would protrude out from the surface of the, the thing. You can Google it and see some pictures. So one of those old timey words that is stuck around. The other way that I hear some people describe it is they look like the heads of matches. Also, I guess old timey since you don't see uh, matches as often anymore. But they basically are endothelial cells that kind of bulge and protrude into the lumen. Sometimes they look like they're almost like a round nucleus, like almost about to fall off and, and you know, drop off of the edge. You know, does it kind of make sense there? They're kind of pinched underneath. So whatever works for you, these kind of tall, bulging little endothelial cells that stick into the lumen. Classically, in the cavernous spaces of a hobnail hemangioma, you will see those cells. But hobnail cells can be seen in lots of things, and they do not by themselves make a diagnosis, okay? This entity typically has them, but if I had all the features here and didn't see perfect hobnail cells, guess what? I would still call this a hobnail hemangioma or targetoid hemosiderotic hemangioma, all right? And then other things can have hobnail cells. Angiosarcomas do um, a lot of times. Lots of other things. There's a type of hemangioendothelioma that does a re reediform hemangioendotheliomas. They do. So by itself, hobnail doesn't mean too much. Don't get worried about that. Don't fixate on that feature alone. I see people get real concerned about that.